Hi everyone and welcome to the latest WAS development log. In this log I want to show you two quite exciting features that I've added, or better one feature and then a little addition to the uh, graph uh, generator. And so the main addition that I'm going to show you is uh, a new co type of constraint called an orientation constraint. Then we'll allow you to define a specific orientation that the part should follow when it's placed in the aggregation. And so this could be extremely useful when you're starting to, for example, try to create um, urban design inspired aggregations where you would want, for example, different uh, housing or functional units to face a specific orientation. For example, you want to expose them to a certain uh, sun orientation and so on. And the second thing I'm going to show you is that I've done a little bit of changes and fixed some bugs in the uh, aggregation graph generator. And now the aggregation graph is not only outputting you the, um, the full graph of the aggregation, but it's also able to output the aggregation graph itself, meaning just the connection that uh, were followed during assembling the aggregation. And I'm going to show you pretty soon that this is quite a quite powerful tool because what this would allow could allow you to do is it would allow you to recreate the same exact aggregation but change the parts uh, while doing so given that you would respect the parts with similar topologies. So that's going to come soon but for now let's take a look at the orientation constraint. So if you download and uh, get the uh, work file that you might find in the description of this video uh, you will find uh, an aggregation that is already set up and we can actually see it here. I'm going to maybe make it a bit smaller. But so this is an aggregation of uh, a simple part, which is an hexagonal prism. I cannot tend to always use hexagonal prisms for some reason. And this uh, hexagonal prism has six connection on its sides, as well as uh, one connection at the bottom and six connection at the top in its corners. So it also has uh, attributes. So it has an attribute which is the block itself with a hole for a window and a second attribute called win which is the window itself. So if we just go and take a look at what's the result, we see that we have this aggregation where we have constantly shifting and rotating elements. And so what you'll notice is that this window that is placed there kind of ends up having all kind of orientations and that might be fine with you but you might also for some specific use for example if you would be designing a, um, like a, an urban agglomeration that would have to follow certain sun orientations and so on you might instead want to actually fix a specific range in which those windows would actually be allowed to appear so let's take a look on how to do that I'm gonna hide the aggregation for now and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my WASP tab and now you'll see that under constraints there is a new component which is called an orientation constraint. And so I'm going to bring that constraint in and uh, so this component takes three inputs. The first input is the direction that has to be tested, so what is the base direction that the part is. The second constraint is an angle which is going to be a range in which this part is allowed to rotate against that line. So let's say if I would take this part, for example, I'm just going to do a little copy. Oops. Oops. So you'll see that what we want to do is we want to take our part and here there is a line and I'm gonna then copy that here so you'll see that here I have drawn a line and this line goes from the center of the part outwards and so what this component does is that if I take my part and in the aggregation this part gets rotated what it's gonna do is it's gonna calculate the angle between this line in its original position and the rotated line in the transform part and then check whether this angle that is exists between the two fits within a range that we might uh, specify here. And lastly there is a third input which is optional which is uh, whether we want to specify a 
angle where this angle should be calculated. In this case, we don't need to specify that because our angle is going to be the word xy because we want to just check rotations in the xy plane. But for example, you might want to have a part that would instead rotate around a different axis and so you would want to check the, this angle change in a different plane. And so you might specify that there. So let's go on and create this constraint. So we're going to create a curve component where we're going to right click on set one curve and go and pick the curve that is placed here and we're going to assign that as the direction of our um, orientation constraint. We are then going to create a domain a construct domain component and here we can specify what's the angle at which we want to allow our uh, part to exist. So I'm going to create a slider and so I'm going to create a slider that goes between minus 180 and 180. So there's this little trick in Grasshopper if you don't know is that if you want to create a slider with a certain range you can just type the minimum range that is going to be minus 180 for me. You can just type two dots then the value that you want to assign to the slider when it's created so for example zero and then two dots again and then the maximum value of the slider so in this case it's going to be 180. So now I have a slider that goes from 0, goes up to 180 and down to minus 180. So I'm going to assign it to minus 45 as my minimum range of my angle and then I'm going to assign it to 45 as my maximum range. So what I'm assigning here is that this line in the aggregation can rotate only plus minus 45 degrees from the base orientation we defined here. You can then assign this to the direction and then if you want you can also assign an XY plane here but that's assigned by default already. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my orientation constraint and place it in the new OC input of the advanced part and if I now go and visualize my aggregation and reset it, it's not working. Now, if you remember from previous videos on uh, constraints, uh, by default, uh, all the aggregation components of WASP do not uh, check constraints. So we have to change the aggregation mode that is set in the mode input in order to consider constraints. Now local const um, orientation constraints are constraints that are attached to the part and so for that reason they are considered as local constraints. So what we want to do is we can activate simply the local constraints and so we're going to do that by changing the mode from 0 to 1. Connect the slider set to 1 there and if I now go on and reset my aggregation you see that effectively my uh, parts they're all facing uh, the same orientation. So I could make for example more parts and that's gonna still be the case. What I could also do is I could start experimenting now. So for example I could say that I will allow rotations just for between 90 and 160 degrees let's say. So if I now go and reset my aggregation See that now all my parts are turned and oriented in the direction I specified. And then of course I could just like make it between minus 180 and 180 and then now they're gonna be everywhere in the same way in which we had before. But then I could again go and say that now it's just between minus 180 and minus 100. And if I reset now all my parts are oriented this way. So as you can see this is a pretty quick way to, can, to test how your aggregation will look when you would fix different kind of orientations for each part and that's gonna be checked and it's gonna allow you to really control the way different parts orient themselves and this could be used as I said for performance reasons so to achieve and climatic reasons to achieve certain orientations, certain sun radiations and so on but it could also be used for much uh, more uh, design-driven explorations of specific aesthetics where you would want an aggregated object to look different from different directions and have different features in different directions. So that's it for the orientation constraint and now the other thing that I want to show you is um, the little changes that have been made in the aggregation graph 
And so I'm going to go in the experimental tab and get the WASP aggregation graph and bring it in. And I'm going to connect my aggregation to it. And I'm going to hide my aggregation for now. And so you see that by default, we get this graph which contains all the nodes. So what we can do is we can get the geometry of our parts. and then get the uh, face boundaries so that we can see the wireframe of it. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. So I'm just going to leave this on for now. So if I visualize my graph, you see that what the graph returns is it returns all the parts that are connected and it returns both the part that were connected specifically by the aggregation, so by adding physically a part, as well as the, the one connections that resulted simply by uh, the configuration of the aggregation. So I connected this part to this one among this phase, but then this phase ended up touching another part, and so that's also considered. So what we can now do as well is we can use a toggle, and we can use a Boolean toggle, and if we change the full graph, which is what we have now by default, to false, you'll now see that we get a graph that has much a much lower number of edges because this graph stores exclusively the specific sequence that the aggregation followed as it was built. So what does this graph should enable you to do is to really visualize the sequence and the process in which the aggregation has been created and it can be extremely useful when you, for example, want to start defining um, assembly strategies of all kinds. Because by analyzing this graph, you can exactly see in which sequence things have been placed in the aggregation, as well as set so the way in which constraints have been checked at which point. And so you can actually start defining different strategies, for example, for a robot to assemble the structure and so on. So that was it. I'm trying to work as much as possible to release not only a beta version, but soon to have a new stable version of WASP coming soon. And I'm going to keep you posted on that. So please, if you want to be stay informed, subscribe to the video and hit the notification bell. And for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.